For many Adventists, waking up on a Sabbath morning and going to church is routine. It's something we do every week. Many of us can't imagine anything more serious than the occasional illness or bad weather preventing us from going to church. For the most part, we have the freedom to worship when, where, and how we want. This freedom is called religious liberty. Religious freedom, or sometimes called in the international community freedom of religion or belief, is part of a cluster of values that the international community has identified as necessary for human flourishing, for peaceful coexistence, and also for uh, societal prosperity. The religious freedom has its root in God. God created freedom, and the reason is very simple. Without freedom, love is impossible. Love has to be a choice. So therefore, God created freedom. Also, uh, even at a deeper level, we can think all human beings are created in the image of God. So if God is free, then God's image ought to also enjoy the same freedom. Religious freedom is fundamental in accomplishing the mission of the Adventist Church, both theologically and practically. The freedom to believe is only as valuable as your ability to build a church to worship in or to share your beliefs with someone else or to keep a day holy according to your religious beliefs. Without that ability to act, religious freedom doesn't really exist. Religious liberty is typically seen as fighting for the Adventist Church's right to worship or an individual Adventist right to worship. But at the Office of Public Affairs and Religious Liberty, or PARL, at the World Church Headquarters, Adventists take religious liberty one step further. One of the things that I'm very proud about our church is that we don't just protect religious liberty for Seventh-day Adventists. We recognize that religious freedom is a gift from God and that uh, we can't coerce anyone to follow Him. We have to protect the rights of all people. For instance, Parle has signed on to a legal case where a young Muslim girl was fired from work for wearing a religious headdress. Parle representatives have supported the rights of individuals from other faiths in efforts to uphold their religious freedom. What Parle advocates is an essential right God intended for every human being. Well, without going into all the facts for this case, the important thing to note is that many people would say, why would we ask to protect the rights of a young Muslim girl? It's because those similar rights in the workplace are the same things that we as Adventists require when we want to get Sabbath accommodation. And so that's why sometimes in explaining it to people, it's important for them to understand that religious freedom for all is important. And without it for all, we can't get it for ourselves either. Although religious liberty is a fundamental human right, the majority of the world is unable to enjoy this right. In fact, 76% of the world's population, or more than 5 billion people, live in countries with high restrictions to religious freedom. These restrictions include blasphemy laws that prohibit negative speech against the country's religious figures, anti-conversion laws that forbid conversion to any religion other than the dominant religion of the land, and requirements to gain official registration to operate as a church. There are other places in a country like Kazakhstan, for example, where you have freedom of worship, which is distinct from freedom of religion. Freedom of worship simply says you can worship when and wherever the government says it's okay. So you can worship in, in a church, that's acceptable, but you may not be able to worship in your home, to have a Bible study among your friends. So there's a difference between worshiping where the government permits you to worship and having true religious freedom, allowing you to share your faith whenever and whenever you choose. There's also the issue of social hostility. This is just where there is a lack of understanding of religious minorities. There may be a dominant religion in a country such as, you know, a, a country in the Middle East that's predominantly um, Islamic and or countries which are predominantly Orthodox Christian. You know, a, a religious minority comes in and it can be very isolating to live in a society where you are the minority and many of your habits and activities make you different. This is a, a topic of concern because 
not enjoying religious freedom goes even deeper than just not enjoying a right. Religious freedom is linked to what makes us human, our conscience. And if a person cannot function according to the dictates of his or her conscience, it is as if that person lives beneath the dignity of his or her humanity. So basically, you deprive people of their religious liberty, it is like depriving them of their humanity. Paro responds to cases of religious persecution by visiting governments, lodging official complaints, and raising the issue in context in the United Nations. Essentially, Parle's primary work is to build good relationships with civic and religious leaders. Some people would say, why do we need to interact with government officials? And one of the catchphrases that we've adopted is you need to make friends before you need friends. And so oftentimes uh, we need government help when we're advocating for Seventh Adventist Church. We may have lost our legal right to exist. We may have Sabbath accommodation issues. Uh, we may have other workplace disputes. And so part of it is being a good neighbor. People need to know us first before they will be able to understand our faith. If Adventists make a good impression on a local leader, this will be positively affect the entire community or even a nation. This is how many mission paths are opened. Positive relationships between the Adventist church and civic or other religious leaders promotes mission work behind the scenes. For example, before coming to the General Conference, Nelu Bircha, Associate Director of Parle, worked in Romania, promoting religious liberty in local schools and other areas of the community. As he built positive relationships with local officials, doors opened for the church's work. One of our friends, the Minister of Education, visited the headquarters of the General Conference and was impressed by the Adventist philosophy on health, education, and religious freedom. On his return to Romania, he summoned all presidents of Romanian universities and talked with them about religious freedom in Romanian schools. It was an extraordinary step for religious freedom in Romania. In the following years, the Prime Minister was one of the speakers at a religious freedom meeting organized by Adventists. And even the President of the country supported our program promoting religious freedom. This is the behind-the-scenes work Parle does to open avenues for Adventist mission work around the world. Daily building good relationships with other people supports the mission of the Church. And that's something every Adventist can do right where he or she is. Public affairs and religious liberty is something that can't be done from a central headquarters. It is inherently something that has to take place at the local level. It is individuals individual church members building good relationships with people in their community, whether it's attending community events, uh, making friends with your civic leaders, your mayor, uh, your local council. These are all things that have to happen on a one-to-one -one basis. If you see something, say something. Don't hesitate to write a letter, send an email, call your representative, be a voice for freedom. And some people may say, I'm one person, I'm one voice, can I make a difference? The thing to remember is we're not called to be successful, we're called simply to be faithful. Religious freedom, and this is key, is a lifestyle. I invite every Seventh-day Adventist to be seen, not just in the public arena, but by everyone as kind people, gentle people, respectful of people's dignity. Please consider how you can promote religious liberty by building good relationships with others in your community. And please pray for the efforts of the church in fighting for religious freedom in places where such freedom is limited. Thank you for supporting the mission of the church.